This Porsche 911 has been off the road for three years because it was set on fire and no one else would fix it. We bought it from a scrapyard for £5,000 and we got it started for only £700. Today, we're finally making it road legal again, but not before we fit a few mods. Right, there are still things left to fix on this car and it's not yet road legal. Yeah. So we're putting coilovers on it. Modify before repair, always. Thank you VC for sending these over. And also we're gonna get to the wheels later as well. And the nice graphics. Oh, I'm so excited. Coilover time, the job that every car person has done probably the most ever. Usually very easy. We're starting on the rear because that's the easiest part. There goes that. Do you remember what happened the last time we did suspension? So where did I fit the suspension on my 8 Series, on my black 8 Series? We went for a drive afterwards and we went over a speed bump and it went dunk, 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 dunk. And what had happened is that we left a spanner in one of the bottom cups of the suspension. So every time we went over a bump, it went against the suspension. <laughs> I'm the in here. Yeah. If ever there was a time for the special-ish merch, it's now. In the last video, we fitted these OZ Allegorita wheels, which we borrowed from Darren at RPM Technic, because we were still searching for a new set of wheels. However, lots of you said you liked our original wheels, so we thought, let's keep them then. So we're gonna have our wheels refurbished by Smart Rims with a bit of a TDC twist, and then they'll be fitted with some Accelera 651s that feel the MX-5 is running too. Thanks to Tire Streets UK for providing these epic tires. So while Will is doing some of the other coilovers, I'm gonna take these wheels apart to get refurbished. And what I mean by taking them apart is that these faces come away from these barrels. It's an old motorsport thing. If you damage a barrel while you're racing, you don't need to replace the whole wheel. You can take the very valuable lightweight centers out, get a new barrel and then go racing. So we need to take them apart, which means undoing every single one of these bolts across. So we've got to get going on that. And there we go. One face, one barrel. Look at that. Should we get the little spacer and check what it fills it out to? It's actually quite, it's quite aggressive. Cool, let me get the rest of them out. Last one. And off I will take these to Smart Rims. We're gonna powder coat them in our colors. Cool. Wheels taken apart, we got back to the coils. Dibs not getting in the car and doing the backs. I hate doing that. I hate crawling into the back space and going. Is there space back? Oh. And that's the exact reason. Yes, let me just get in the 996, darling. <laughs> oh, look at that. Can I have that? It's just there. I can't reach it. I can't reach either, mate. Now that Edwin had stopped messing about, we got the old suspension out and got the shiny new BC racing coils in. So we've got to swap over our drop link, which looks in a fine condition. A fine condition. In the new coilover goes. Let's take the other one out and then we can put both the rears in, Gov. All right, see you, see you there. Lovely. Hello, I have a strut, please. Oh, why? Well, how do we never get anything done, man? The second strut arrives. Mr. President, there's been a second strut. <laughs> We're missing another small nut. That's a big nut, Ben. But I do appreciate the thought and the gesture. You know what, Ben? You're right. It was that nut. If we could all just say sorry to Ben, that'd be great, thanks. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> Hell, you're tall, mate. You, Will, you look different, mate. I'm looking different, mate. Money for nothing. There we go. That's what I have to contend with. For free. With me forced to work alone because Will was busy singing, I finished getting the rears in, which made me quite philosophical. Lowe's is the most satisfying thing. Wheels though. You know what it is? It's yin and yang. With Lowe's without wheels, you're lacking. But with wheels without Lowe's, you're lacking. Yeah. Makes you think. Anyway, coilovers on the front, let's go. Before we transform this pig of a Porsche, we just want to say a quick thank you to this week's sponsor, Car Vertical. Every single day, hundreds of cars get crashed. Some of them get fixed and go back on the road without any history. With a Car Vertical report though, you can find it out. All you have to do is enter your reg number or your VIN and Car Vertical will tell you if that car has been crashed, stolen or clocked. As you can see here, this is my E46 M3 and while it is broken because it will not start, I can sleep safely at night because it has green ticks on Car Vertical for odometer, finance and damage. Unfortunately, this other BMW hasn't been so lucky. We've got a yellow warning for damage. And if you scroll down, you can see classic M140 activities. It's got a completely smashed in front end. The front axle is bent, the bonnet is smashed. All of the airbags have gone off. And then when you click on damage, it'll tell you that this car is actually a Cat S. So if you see this car come up for sale, probably in Birmingham, with a car vertical report, you can find out that it's been in a crash before. So make sure that anytime you're buying a car or even a van or motorbike, you run a car vertical report to make sure that the price you're paying matches its history. 
As a little treat for you guys, Car Vertical have offered 20% off if you use code TDC. Whilst we cracked on with the fronts, we decided to give Ben the easy task of sticking the number plates on, which went well. Your, that's where you're choosing. Ben did actually eat his lunch off this. Yeah. We'll put a clip in of that. Things no one has ever said about a number plate. <laughs> that's a brand spanking new number plate and you put Perry Nays on it. What's your method here? I'm gonna stick it on the car. Oh, well, why do we trust him to do this? Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Do you want to jump over to the coil next? Nah, it's a bit easy. <laughs> oh no. What happened there, Ben? We're idiots. And this is what we have to do. With this guy. Listen, Ben, for your first go, it's a good attempt. Maybe on the next one, you will not f it up so badly. Now we had our plates sort of stuck to the car, we finished getting the front coils in and then dropped the car down to have a look at the fitment. All oh, that rear needs to come down. All oh, the front's looking better though. We aren't gonna go any lower right now because we're gonna get this car properly aligned. If we're gonna beat Phil, we need every chance we can get. So we're gonna get this car aligned and we will drop it and do all of the alignment stuff then because there's no use in us idiots messing with it and flipping spanners around and doing preload because we'll break it. A huge thank you to BC Racing for sending these out so quickly. They had to come from America. They didn't exist in the UK. They had to send them over. If you have any coilovers, hit up BC. I run them on all my personal cars. I genuinely do like them. The link will be in the description, so make sure you check them out for any of your coilover needs. My hands are dirty and they need to be clean for this next part. I received something this morning that you haven't seen yet. I've, I haven't looked at it. I made these on Illustrator. I don't know how to use Illustrator. So a lot of this might be completely wrong. Simon from Psychographics, he was genuinely a saint the amount of times that I was like, hi Simon mate, um, I don't know how to make this. And he'd be like, okay, let me do it. <gasps> oh, I'm already seeing it and I'm excited. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what. Oh, it's perfect. I did a thing right. I did it. We came back the next morning with fresh eyes, ready to fit our new decals. Here we go. Here we go. One time. Oh, he's gone in. Oh no. Will. Well, what have you done? Well, Just hold the line, caller. Ooh, 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 you've committed. Well, well, if it isn't TDC, I think that is. <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. Just a little thing that makes it cool. Yes. Right, now we've got to not mess up the side graphics. Yeah, that was the probably the That was one. the easiest one. I'm quite scared, if I'm honest. There's fear in my heart, keep me scaring. This is the moment of truth. Oh, I don't like this at all. I just don't like it, I'm just scared. At the end of the day, I'm just one scared boy. First half seemingly okay, we moved on to the second end, which Will was extremely helpful for. I don't get nervous. But at the same time, I get really f nervous. Oh my God, I can see the color. That's looking, oh, hang on, I'm concentrating, but with an erection. <laughs> I've got a serious semi on. Look at that! So you know how last week we showed the render? Yep. And what did I say? I said, if you don't like it, shut your mouth. If you hate it, just don't comment. Just shut your mouth. So what are all those comments about? The point here is we're building a car for TDC. So it's gonna have our colors on it. You're gonna see this and you're gonna think, that's TDC. Right, William, it's time for you to clear up and stand back. Wow, wow, we were. <laughs> yes. I don't care what you say, that's cool and I love it. And it's not the Manthe Racing, it's the medium rare. Over the moon with the graphics, we got going on the other side and then moved on to sorting out our dodgy lights, which were still giving us issues and would stop us from making the car road legal. While the car looks very good, it is not ready for its MOT yet. Will, we don't have rear brake lights, correct? Nope. But what we also don't have is a working front indicator. So that means getting the bulb out, which in any other car, you just, you know, put your reach in your hand in and you pull it out from behind, right, Will? So what Porsche do, they give you this little tool. There's a little slot in this hole. You slide him in, you turn like that, and then watch, Will. And it pops the whole light out. How weird is that? It also undoes all of the electrical connections for you. That is the most unnecessarily German thing. So we've already taken this out. Inside, we found a perfectly intact bulb, which is concerning to us because we just know how to change bulbs when they're broken. A quick inspection inside this little hole is some of the green death. A little bit of uh, corrosion. So we gave it a quick sand down, put you in, and you make sure he's in, and then you go, done. It's unnecessary, but it's cool. I like it. Do we have a working indicator now? Yeah. Yes. Another thing ticked off the list. 
just got to work out that side light, which we think is just a bulb wheel. Unfortunately, we spoke too soon. One brand new bulb later, and we still didn't have all of our rear lights. <laughs> and the brake lights are on. Why? Take this camera. So it was back to the drawing board to test out what was going wrong. So our side light does work, but when it's plugged into the other side, it doesn't work. And we just tested it then. And when we put this one on that side, no side light, but did have a brake. Now sure that it was a deeper issues in the car's wiring and not a dodgy connection, we spent more time consulting the wiring diagrams. And then... The side lights are on. Eee! Brake, 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 brake. The braking commences. Yes! We're going to come in with this and the MOT man's going to go, boys, you shouldn't have. That's all the lights. That's all the lights. As Kanye West would say. That's what he was saying. He was record He was thinking about a Porsche 996 with burn damage. Yeah. He went, all of the lights. He was on MOT duty that day. <laughs> What next, Will? I can't even remember. I'm losing track with this car. A lot of you guys have been saying that we've been making very good progress, and we have, but we are losing our goddamn minds here. Right, it is MOT day. Fortunately, yesterday, the V5 turned up, and that means that we are the registered keepers of the 911. We applied for this like five or six weeks ago, and it finally turned up yesterday. We can't tax the car without this, but we also can't tax the car without an MOT. So we're gonna head off to the MOT centre now, let it get tested, and, and fingers crossed that it passes. We are genuinely worried that this isn't, and we're going to the Nürburgring on Monday, so. So in the UK, we have a thing called an MOT. It's basically a yearly inspection that your car has to pass every year for it to be allowed to go on the road. So we have to get this for this car to be able to go on the road. And we can't film them. You're not allowed to legally film them in the UK. We just have to sit and patiently wait and hope that our car passes. This is one of the worst feelings. It's just the waiting. Even if you are 99% certain about your car, you get to an MOT and you're still sat there going, but what if they find like a wheel bolt? Breaking news. Your car's shit. Your car's not legal. But then we got a call. Hello? All right, we're coming back now. All right, give me a sec. Right. Thankfully for us, the car passed. But before we had time to celebrate, we had an appointment at Evolution Auto Works, who were going to properly set up our shiny new coils. Car dropped off with alignment specialist Adam. We headed down to Smart Rims to collect our freshly powder coated wheels. Look at that! So, originally the idea was to match the centers of the wheels to the side of the gradient. Adam from Smart Rims had a look, he couldn't get the match right, so we went for a purple. Actually, to be fair, it's exactly in the middle of our two colors. There's a little bit of a sparkle in there as well. Oh, it is, yeah. I'm very excited to see oh, this now. See this. Massive, massive thank you to Adam at Smart Rooms for turning these around so quickly. We dropped these off 48 hours ago and said, please can you do something, anything? And he turned around this. Huge thank you. If you ever need anything Alloy Wheels doing, hit up Smart Rooms. They're always the best. Excited about the look of our new wheels, we headed back down to Evolution Auto Works to collect the 996. But when we arrived, there was something wrong. This was the final part, right? This was just, you know, the cherry on top, the little alignment. What's happened? There's a suspicion that our car is bent, that the subframe is bent because they've managed to get the toe. So the toe is sort of this, it's this and this. They've managed to get it into like 1.5 mil on one side, which is great, perfect. On the other side, it's 10. I'm not that technically minded, I don't understand it, but that is a tyre masher 9000. Yep. That is going to absolutely destroy one of the tyres and it's going to favour one corner. We've worked out it would favour the left, which is great for the Nürburgring, which turns right. The car was silver and now it's white. Perhaps someone did a little skid and bent in or mashed in one side of it and thought, I've got to repair this quarter panel anyway, might as well spray it white. Many, many hours later, the guys had finally found a way to get our pig of a 911 correctly aligned and Adam was feeling confident. How easy was it? Don't. <laughs> Don't. Good luck at the Nurburg. You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. I'm going to let you drive the car out of here, obviously, and go and smash it around the circuit. But whether it's going to be spot on for the Nurburg Rings, probably a bit of a different story. We have to get there first. The alignment took so long that we ran out of daylight, which meant we had to come back the next day to finally finish the 911's look. The wheels are built. They look. So cool. Hold the line, caller. I'm too excited. I'm going in. <laughs> There's something, something about track meets. We did our research on the space. Yeah, we did, yeah. Did some calculations. And then we came up with a, uh, with a measurement uh, that we needed a 74 mil spacer. And we thought, back to the drawing board. That's not right. The more interesting part is the rear. Because the rear is low. Look at the meat on that thing. I'm about to get meat sweats. 
<laughs> oh, well. It's gonna hit that arch. We're gonna be on that arch, I think. Look that rear. That rear is absolutely spot on. That's. For those of you who are gonna comment, why are you changing the wheels and putting spacers on after you've got an alignment? The wheels that we borrowed are very close to this wheel setup with the spacers. So we're matching basically perfect what it should have been when we got it aligned. So don't worry. All four wheels on, it was time for the moment of truth. Oh, no way. No f way. It clears. We were very worried off camera that this was gonna ro rub and we're gonna have to roll the arches instantly. But somehow there is clearance there. It's not touching, but it's tu it's going to be touching. With a couple of big boys and some bumps, it might. It's starting to come together. I think the black needs to go. Maybe we'll do that again down the line, but it is 3.25 on Friday. We leave for the ferry, 9 a.m. Monday. These are the final hours that we have to work on this car before we drive it to Germany. Okay, so the wheels are on and we're just about to go for a drive, but before we do that, we're gonna get rid of some of these red bits. The only thing that is gonna be red and gray, as you might notice, is these seats, which we borrowed from Steve because we had to get them through an MOT. We do have cool seats coming, the gear stick and the handbrake, and maybe like bits like that. But other than that, we're going back. With most of the old red interior parts removed, it was finally time to put the world's cheapest 911 back on the road. <laughs> This is the first time this car's legally been on the road in three years. Come on then. Come on then. Yes! <laughs> it's very stiff on the road, but when we're on the ring... This will be perfect. This car was sitting up on a rack. It probably thought, I'm going for parts, man. I'm done. But now... Plates, tax, insurance, and an MOT. I think we'll probably rub, especially at the Nürburgring, on the really big, like, on dips. On the dips, yeah. But that's... Hey. That's not all the time. That's not for us to decide. That's, that's in God's hands. No windows is a problem. No windows is a problem. That is an issue we still have. And no climate control. Your turn? Yeah. Oh, it feels good to be driving this on the road. <laughs> we might have only driven this for, what, five, 10 minutes <laughs> so yeah. far, but I, I promise you, this will not have a single issue on the way to the Purple Ring or back, <laughs> not one. You know what, I agree. If you want to see where this car all started, you can click up here and watch that video. See you next week. Yeah, see you next week. <laughs>